Hi, my name is Paige Hutton. I go to Wesleyan University where I am an American Studies major. And honestly, being here at NYU was such a blessing. I'm so happy about it. Um, so this is my presentation. Um, this summer, I've been looking at how queer youth interact with and create representation for themselves. In this presentation, I'm focusing on the way this group has constructed a fandom which is premised on the understanding that the characters in the television show, Steven Universe, are depictions of queer and racialized subjects. I am also looking at their reactions to what are seen as threats to this representation. Specifically, I am analyzing an incident in which some members of this particular section of the Steven Universe fandom, from here on referred to as simply the universe, um, whoops, um, <laughs> verbally harass another queer but white fan that would, for what was seen as whitewashed and racist artwork. Some internet critics use this incident to invalidate um, the identification with the characters and take away their ability to gain empowerment by participating in the fandom. Although I do not condone these actions, I recognize the importance of queer representation and think the incident offers up a good opportunity to rethink fandoms and interrogate why exactly some queer youth reacted so strongly in the first place. So for the sake, for the sake of time, this is just a quick background on the show, which is here. Um, it is basically about three alien rebels called Gems and the half-gem, half-human son of their former leader um, who are tasked with protecting the Earth from colonization. We are told that Steven's mother was the leader of the rebels, but she gave up her physical form so that Steven could exist. Steven has the characteristics of both the gems and a human, placing him in a liminal space between both forms of embodiment. There are a lot of LGBT identifications with Steven Universe, since some of the characters are thought to be queer and in queer relationships. Um, but I'm more interested in queer time and queer family structures. Similarly, while many people have looked at the characters and interpreted them to be people of color, I am most interested in how fans online have theorized the show that the show offers a queer and racialized storyline. Oh, okay. I borrow from queer theorist Jack Halberstam to theorize about reproductive time versus queer time. He argues that, quote, Queer uses of time and space develop, at least in part, in opposition to the institutions of family, heterosexuality, and reproduction, end quote, and that they have the, quote, potential to open up new life narratives and alternative relations to time and space, end quote. Okay, it's not working. Okay, for example, some Reddit users have noticed that the show revolves around a young boy living away from his biological father with who are essentially his three mothers. I say mothers um, not necessarily because the gems are female, but because they all use female pronouns. Um, this family structure is not the heteronormative one we're used to seeing on television, but brings to mind the extended non-kin family structures that historically people of color have created for themselves. This has occurred both of out of necessity and out of an understanding that many people of color share common life experiences. In this frame, Greg Universe, Steven's biological father says, now that I'm feeling better, I should probably move back home, reminding us that Greg is an outsider in this scenario. Um, he is not the main provider of the family. The three gems are Steven's primary caregivers. Uh, okay. Zambi070 was a Tumblr artist who drew this portrait of Stephen, his mother, and his father, um, and received a lot of backlash for it. I argue that this piece of art imposes reproductive time on a queer timeline and kinship network that the show offers. Um, this is what Rose Quartz, Stephen's mother, looks like in the TV show. Um, it comes from a frame, it comes from a videotape that Rose leaves for Steven, explaining that they cannot exist together. Although she doesn't look like a racialized subject, the dynamic between Rose and Steven calls to mind 
the reality that some young people can never actually be children, a reality that is very racialized. From very early on in the series, Stephen is expected by the Gems to fulfill the role that his mother played. In multiple episodes, Stephen is actually referred to as Rose and put on trial for the sins his mother is alleged to have committed. At 12 years old, Stephen fights monsters and goes to space to save his friends. Conversely, even when Rose takes the form of a child, she still carries the baggage of adulthood. So ironically, even though the characters in the series mourn the loss of Rose Quartz regularly, she is never far from mind. Stephen and Rose cannot exist together, but Rose's past is still Stephen's present. Um, you may still be wondering why some members of this section of the Stephen Universe fandom reacted so strongly. Um, and I think that in order to really understand the deep connection that they have to the series, we need to expand on our understanding of what a fandom is. Okay, sorry. Um, so we normally think of a fandom as a group of like-minded individuals. Uh, but I think we could benefit from thinking about fandoms as states of being. Uh, as I was thinking this through, I looked at the root of the word fandom and considered its meanings. Um, it could denote a class of people or attributes associated with them, as in hippiedom. Um, it could refer to space, as in kingdom, or it could denote a state or condition, such as in martyrdom. It is this last usage of Dom to refer to a state that I'm most interested in, but I want to go one step further. We can also think of Dom as a prefix and the ways in which it connotes a usage of power. Keeping this in mind, I think we can return to the word fandom and consider fans as empowered individuals, or fandom. The existence of this um, particular strand of the universe is contingent upon the existence of the characters as queer and racialized. So for the young people in this fandom, this drawing was a real threat to them. Um, any interpretation of the characters of Steven Universe this way was not only the wrong interpretation, but a violent act of invalidation. To place Steven and Rose in straight time whitewashes the characters since the racialized script, the burden that Stephen carries even as a child, has been overwritten. Uh, the imposition of re reproductive time also takes away the queerness that characterizes the relationship between Stephen and his mother. To many fans, this was an attempt to impose whiteness and straightness on some of the very few queer and racialized characters available. And if the characters are not this way, then the fandom cannot exist taking away the empowerment that the series provides. This is not to dismiss the real harm that these people caused the Tumblr user. I think her artwork could have been critiqued without attacking her as a person, though as I am suggesting, the distinction between the characters and fans is not necessarily discreet. However, the resulting dismissal of the Steven Universe fandom as toxic functioned not as a way to critique some behavior and look at ways to resolve the issue, but functioned as a way to lessen the credibility of all the fans in the universe. In an article, Why the Steven Universe Fandom is the Worst Ever, the author addresses the argument that there are only a select few people in the fandom who are considered toxic by claiming that one rotten apple ruins the whole bunch. What this person is essentially saying is that anyone who ascribes race, race or queerness to the characters has ruined the fandom for everyone else, i.e. people who aren't as invested in the series. Because the creators of the show never explicitly give the characters genders or races, the way these ideas are kept alive are through the discourses about them. So when an artist offered up a different reading, there is a huge backlash. This case study offers an opportunity for us to um, not only better understand this incident, sorry, um, but the importance of queer and racialized representation in general. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>